Yo, what the heck's going on, all beautiful faces? My name is Sensei, or Dominic here, bringing you guys another amazing video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching all your beautiful faces on how to make a beautiful thumbnail on Photoshop like this. If you guys are new, click that subscribe button, and I'll talk to all your beautiful faces in the video. Peace. I took a pill in Ibiza. To show a feature I was cool And when I finally got sober Felt ten years older But fuck it, it was something to do I'm living out in L.A. I drive a sports car just to prove I'm a real big baller Cause I made a million dollars And I spend it on girls and shoes But you don't wanna be high like me Never really know why like me You don't ever wanna step off that roller coaster And be all alone you, you guys have probably noticed this by now and I do not have an overlay or a webcam on my screen right now. And the reason for that is because when I do tutorials, I don't want you guys to not be able to see this or that due to, you know, me having an overlay on. So it's just easier for you guys to see what's happening on the screen if there's nothing but just the screen in front. So the very first thing you're going to want to do is you want to click on File and click New. And while making a thumbnail, there's two different sizes you could pick from, and that is 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080. I prefer 1920 by 1080 just for the fact that the text can be bigger and people will see the text and everything clearer and it'll just look better overall. So once it loaded up, it should look like this. And um, basically, if you have a white screen, you're going to want to make it transparent. And there's actually a few ways you could do that. One way is, you know, just by clicking erase like this. And that normally takes a while. So I found a quick way by just clicking magic eraser tool, just clicking on the white, and bam, it's transparent. Next, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find a gameplay screenshot or just anything you want as the background. So I'm going to put some CSGO gameplay and um here it is so now that you have it like this i like to drag it to the top left corner and before just dragging it out like this the image will be really distorted so you can either just do it like that until it snaps or you can just get it to the center hold shift and drag it all the way out i'll zoom it in just a little bit more so you see a little bit more of the gun then click enter the very next thing i like to do is just to make it a little color so pick any color you want I'm just gonna pick blue I'm gonna go to the brush tool and you gotta make sure that you have a new layer selected if you don't know how to create one just click this little button right here and it creates a new layer so the next thing I want to do is just make the brush really high so make it a something thick like this and you're gonna put it on the softest brush possible so it'll be that brush right here and I'm just gonna brush along like that. Now that you got that done, you're going to create a new layer and you're going to do the same thing except you're going to want to put it on black. And you just want to click on that like that. Do it again. And now you have this beautiful canvas right here and this is basically all you're going to need for the background. So you're just going to click shift and select all of these layers and you're going to press control G to create a new group and you could double click on it to change the name. I'm gonna change it to backing or background, whatever you guys wanna call it. Next, what you're gonna wanna do is get your text. So I like to drag it out all the way for the whole canvas. Wait, let me just pull this up a little bit more. All right, whatever, it won't let me. So there's different fonts you can use. I like using Myriad Pro. It's a default font. I'm gonna try putting it up to 275 and see how that looks. Okay, so here I'm just going to put photo, shop, just one word like that, highlight over it, and I'm just going to change the color to white. And you see how the letters are kind of crammed? It's actually really simple to change that, so you just want to click in this little box right here and go down to typography, and here you just click on the Photoshop thing, the, the, the text layer I should say. You're just going to change the little VA spot to zero. I actually liked it a little bit cramped, so I'm putting it back to 25. And now that you got that, I'll just move the Photoshop, the word that says Photoshop, near the middle. 
So a simple way to do this is to press Control R and you see this ruler pop up all around. And all you're gonna wanna do is you're just gonna move it, drag from the very corner and wait until it snaps in the middle, like so. And now that snapped in the middle, it should be really easy to move the Photoshop. So this is the how I want it. I'm actually gonna try to put the same ruler in the middle, like so. Actually like putting it a little bit above, wait till it snaps. So it snapped right there. So then you can just delete the ruler by clicking Control R and you have just a little center diagonal or whatever you wanna call it. Now I'm gonna put a whole new text. I'm gonna say tutorial. And for this font, what I would do is I'd put it on Nexa bold. Just change the font types of everything. And now that you got the Nexa bold, I'm gonna put this and just exit out of it. And the tutorial is gonna be a lot bigger like this. And that's what you want. It kind of puts like a two-tone to it. I don't really know how to explain it. So find somewhere so that the tutorial is kind of hanging out a little bit. So like right under the O would be good. So now that you got this, there's actually a few things that you can do. And what I like doing is clicking on all both of your text fonts. Just adding drop shadows and gradient overlays to the font. It just makes it look cleaner. And I like to put the opacity down to like 20. If not, you can put it down to a 30. And it shows pretty well. You don't have to put drop shadow. Um, if it looks a little bit too black and you don't like the highlight, I put the opacity down to like a 24 around that area. And it looks really nice. So I'm just going to do the same thing for the tutorial one. So now that you got this, you could either change the font if it looks kind of wacky. And to be honest with you guys, this font looks a little bit whack. So I'm just going to change the font of the very top one to Nexa Light. It kind of expands it like that. And if it's a little bit too widespread for you, you can always just go back to the typography right here and change the VA of Photoshop up to like 75. That actually looks really nice. So I'm gonna put that to essentials. And now that you got that, you have tutorial right there. And it kind of makes a quick like contrast. I don't really know how to explain it. All I can say is that it makes a really nice contrast between the two layers. And now you can change the colors of the text itself. And if you're trying to change the colors, you want to find something that helps contrast the text and the background. So one way of doing that is by just clicking on one of the fonts. And okay, you don't want to create a new layer. That's not how you do it. Select one of the fonts, click the text tool and just edit it and change the color to whatever you want. I actually have a swatch called this and it looks kind of weird. It's not it's not made for color. Next to the light, it's normally made for a nice clean white. So now that you saw that, you can just keep it white. But I did like it. I think it would look nice for the tutorial area. Let's just click on that. Click on the swatch. That looks really nice. I think I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. Like that. Actually, yeah, a little bit lighter. So you could put it down to pink or red. This is the pink that I have right now. You could copy it down. FF0060. Copy it down if you want. And I have a nice clean header. And if you header. <laughs> nice clean thumbnail and if you want to make it even better and just add more detail to it you could go if you have a team logo just go to object and item or wherever you have your logo saved to so this is the logo and you know it looks kind of whack because it has the background to it and it'll look kind of weird if you just put that there so again you're gonna use a magic eraser tool right here rasterize it and just click all around like that and it should work and you have a little white going around so a quick easy way to fix that 
you just by changing the color overlay to white or red or anything like that. I'm just gonna change it to white. And it looks really nice. But it sadly still says the text right here. So just grab the eraser and just erase it. And it won't erase anything else just because I selected that layer. I didn't if I do this, it wouldn't really erase anything. So select the logo layer, just erase. Now that you got there, you can kind of lower how big it is or however you want to do it. I like putting the logo in the little corners like so. And then if you want, like if it's a Q&A or something, if you saw from the last little thumbnail, you can put a question mark. Again, it has this background. Pretty easy fix. Just go here, magic eraser, rasterize. And bam this is the final product if you want to add more detail you could put like as I put little question marks or anything for whatever you want guys once you finish making the thumbnail it should look something like this or this I hope you guys enjoyed if you're new click that subscribe button and if this video gets 20 likes you know I'll make a tutorial on how to make an overlay like I said, I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll talk to all you beautiful faces in the next video. Peace.